I will first, because I'm the first speaker, start with a short introduction about the whole Mood Food project, so to give you a bit of an overview. Um, so we all know that depression is one of the most prevalent and disabling disorders in the uh, EU. And there were already some indications that food and depression were related. And uh, next to this, also obesity is a very big problem. Uh, so therefore, in 2014, uh, the Mood Food Project started to um, test these associations. And this is the underlying overview of the Mood Food Project. So here we look at uh, both food intake and food-related behavior with depression. And we look at the bidirectional links. And we also take obesity into account as well as the social environment. And in this Mood Food project, we make use of different uh, work packages, as we call it. Um, so we look at observational research in six uh, cohort studies across the EU. Uh, we have additional survey data in Denmark and Spain on food-related behavior. And uh, we have some short-term experiments, which are online courses on the feasibility of making behavioral changes. And next to this, we have a trial running uh, in four different countries with a two by two factorial design um, and we have multi-nutrient and placebo pills and we have a food related behavior change um, I think it is a cognitive uh, psychology approach and then adjusted to lifestyle so that is running now and these are all of our partners across the EU so we have universities involved but also dissemination partners And as Paul just said, if you have any more questions, please visit, it, uh, visit us at our booth in the exhibition hall. Okay, so now I will start with my own presentation, which is about the mindful eating behavior scale. And I will tell you how and why it was developed, something about the psychometric properties, and I will also show correlations uh, with BMI. And I declare no conflict of interest. So, as you all know, obesity rates are increasing, and um, this uh, calls for effective strategies to prevent um, obesity and also uh, for weight maintenance, uh, because we know that much of the uh, traditional dieting approaches do often not work in the long term, so they mostly have a short-term effect. Uh, so therefore, I think we need to look at maybe other strategies, and one of these would be to incorporate also some food-related behavior into this uh, traditional dieting approach, because I think it's not only about what you eat, but also how you eat it, and this can then also influence your food intake. Um, and one of these behaviors that is recently suggested is mindful eating. And mindful eating is paying attention at your food while you're eating. So eating with attention and awareness, basically. And uh, this can lead to less automatic reactions, uh, which can then lead to less overeating, for example, or uh, less eating by emotional uh, triggers. Um, so therefore, I was interested in looking at mindful eating in relation to depression as well as obesity. And we know from general mindfulness interventions that they are effective for behavioral regulation, emotion regulation, self-regulation, uh, but meta-analysis suggests that um, mindfulness interventions that are specifically targeted at the eating behavior are much more effective for BMI at disordered eating uh, eating behaviors, and uh, these interventions that focus on eating behavior found decreases in weight, binge eating, emotional and external eating, and increases in self-efficacy for weight loss and a healthy dietary intake. Um, so I wanted to look at mindful eating, uh, but to be able to do that, you need to have, uh, you need to um, be able to measure mindful eating. And until now, there are two existing scales. These are the mindful eating scale and the mindful eating questionnaire. And the mindful eating questionnaire was developed based on six eating constructs. So they took existing um, eating behaviors and then thought of questions that were related to that. 
uh, while the mindful eating scale was developed based on two general mindfulness scale and then they adjusted the items to eating behavior. Um, so I think it's already very good that there are questionnaires that are specifically targeted at mindful eating. However, when I was looking at them, um, I thought that maybe some issues needed to be addressed. Um, for example, the mindful eating questionnaire, um, because it is based on these existing behavior constructs, there is the risk of having overlap with other behaviors. So for example, they have one uh, scale on emotional eating, and emotional eating is eating based on negative emotions. And we think these are different constructs, uh, and they make one total score out of these domains. So therefore we thought, what are you then exactly measuring? And they also ask about very specific situations, like going to an all-you-can-eat buffet or going to parties. And then you can think by yourself as a really representative for your normal eating behavior. And both of these questionnaires are um, validated in really small samples. And there is no confirmatory factor analysis done. So therefore, our aim was to develop a new scale to measure mindful eating, uh, the mindful eating behavior scale. And for this, we use the definition of eating with attention and awareness. Um, and we wanted to test internal structure, the reliability scores, and the convergence validity. And we wanted this scale to um, focus only on mindful eating. We wanted to ask about common situations, and we wanted to test it in a large sample. So that's where the three aims. So the data were collected within the longitudinal aging study Amsterdam, and this is a, a study that started 25 years ago, and uh, people from three different um, regions in the Netherlands are involved, and they are followed every three years. Um, and within this sample, we conducted a nutrition and food-related behavior study in 2014-2015. Um, this was a questionnaire, and we had a, a food frequency questionnaire in it, questions on depression and mental health, and also um, food-related behavior, of course. Um, and 1,439 people participated, and in this study I excluded people that did not fill it out themselves, because some people are really old, so they cannot do it by themselves, um, and also the missing items. And this uh, led to an analytical sample of 1,227 people. So we developed the scale um, based on like a literature search. So we start looking at existing questionnaires. Um, and from this, we selected um, 18 items and we developed two ourselves because we thought they were missing. Uh, when needed, we translated them and we also pilot tested them. And we expected to find four domains, uh, and I will show you the items later. So um, we expected to find one domain on paying attention to your food, one on hunger and satiety cues, one on eating with awareness, and another on um, eating while doing other things. And we did exploratory structural equation modeling, confirmatory factor analysis, we calculated the Cronbach's alphas, and we also um, calculated correlations with a lot of external variables to get an idea if uh, you are measuring what you intend to measure. So we looked at, are they in the expected directions? So these are the characteristics of our sample, and as you can see, the mean age was around 69 years, and the mean BMI was 27. So now I will show you the different domains with the items and the um, factor loadings for both the exploratory structural equation modeling as well as the confirmatory factor analysis. Uh, so in this first scale, which we called focus eating, we have items on noticing the flavors of the food, the smell of the food, uh, noticing how your food looks, but also staying aware of your food while eating. And we can see that all these five items load um, highly onto this scale, and we took 0.3 as a minimum factor loading. Then the second domain, which is hunger and satiety cues. Um, so we started with six items. 
So I trust my body to tell me when to eat, what to eat, how much to eat. Uh, I rely on my hunger signals to tell me when to eat. I rely on my fullness signals to tell me when to stop eating. And then we had an item, I trust my body to tell me when to stop eating. And as you might see, this item got deleted in the final scale. And we did this because the 10th and the 11th item showed a high correlated uniqueness. So this means that uh, by adding both of them, you don't have any more explained variants. So therefore, we could delete one of them. The third domain, eating with awareness. So this is about being aware while eating and not doing it automatically. And these three items are in it. And the last one is eating without distraction. And we started with six different items on um, doing other things, so multitasking, watching TV, reading, eating at your desk or computer. And as you might see, two items got deleted because they had too low uh, factor loading. So these were, I eat at my desk or computer, or I watch TV while I'm eating. So the final um, confirmatory factor analysis model showed 17 items, and this showed really good model fit. And we found of four expected domains, um, only three items got deleted, and you can see that all the Chromebox alphas are above 0.7. So now we look at the correlation. So I did a lot of correlations, but today I will only focus at BMI and weight satisfaction. And BMI was measured uh, weight and height. And as you can see, we find correlations, although they are really low, but significant correlations with three of the four domains. So focus eating, hunger and satiety cues, and eating with awareness. And with satisfaction with weight, we find um, four significant correlations. And this shows that more mindful eating is related to a lower or a lower a higher BMI, no a lower BMI and a higher satisfaction with weight. So what can we now say about these results? Um, so first, we found no correlation between BMI and eating without distraction, uh, while we expected to find this, uh, because earlier studies also found that, for example, listening to a story led to eating more, uh, and this could then eventually lead to a higher BMI. Um, but it could be that the other domains are more important in relation to BMI, so this needs to be further investigated. Um, so we deleted also three items, and two items were on um, eating while watching TV and eating at your desk or computer. And we think these do, do not um, load into these factors because we have already the uh, question on multitasking, and I think this is more mindful eating because that already implies that you're not eating consciously. Um, while watching TV or eating at your desk, you might, you might still be eating consciously while the TV is on, for example. Uh, and the item on reading was in this scale, and I think because reading is more complex, so more brain regions are involved, so therefore you don't can eat consciously while reading. And uh, last of all, we found some low interfactor correlations, so between these domains, and this means that we cannot uh, make one total score out of the mindful eating domains, so they measure different elements, and therefore they should be kept separately when uh, calculating associations. So strengths of this study are that we use a large representative sample, although they are, of course, from a specific age range. Uh, we had a univocal focus on mindful eating, and the scale contains only 17 items. And the limitation is that we do not have test research test data available. So in conclusion, the Mindful Eating Behavior Scale was successfully developed. It may be used in future research to measure the different domains of mindful eating in relation to other health behaviors. And the correlations with three of these domains show that they might be related um, to BMI, BMI and weight gain. So, thank you for your attention. Okay. Um, 
we're generally going to save questions till the end, but we have a few minutes um, spare at the moment. So, does anybody have any specific questions to ask? Thank you for your interesting presentation. Um, did you look at your questionnaire in relation to other questionnaires of eating behaviour traits? So, for example, you might expect to see a negative association with things like external eating, mm -hmm. dietary disinhibition, yeah, in other words, validating your scale. Yeah. So we looked at a lot of different uh, factors, and um, we think there is a, a big association with, for example, emotional eating, dietary restraints. So we also did an additional analysis in which we did a factor analysis with all of these scales, and then we thought that they really measure different elements, so they really um, load into their own factor. And the correlation, I think, with emotional eating, extra, none of the correlations were really high, so maybe 0.3, but they were in the expected directions, but also not for all the uh, domains, uh, we found the same correlations, of course. So, for example, the domain hunger and satiety cues uh, didn't load on that much uh, uh, variables. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, I've got a quick question yeah. for you. Um, how how is it? Is it any, to any extent? Is this a state variable as well? So, do people consistently show mindfulness? mindful eating, mm -hmm. or in some circumstances, do people get less mindful about their eating, say if they're very, very hungry, or something like that? Does it fluctuate, or is it quite fixed, do you think? Mm, yeah, we ask about really general, so think about the general, and not ask about the last week or something, but yeah, of course, I think that could have influence, yeah, so that's, yeah. We did not measure anything about hung being hungry, I think, so, yeah, but I think it is, uh, a stable trait, but you can change it with intervention, so it can be easily uh, yeah, changed. Okay, thank you. Oh, sorry, another question there. And given the, the average of the age of the population mm -hmm. you looked at, do you think um, you would get the same results with uh, younger people? Um, yeah, that's a good question. So. We have to validate it in other samples, but I did um, use this questionnaire also in a Danish and a, a Spanish sample, and they had ages between 18 and 88, I think, and there I found almost the same results. So maybe some items didn't load as high as here, but in general, the results were pretty similar. So yeah, yeah thank you. Okay, great, thank you very much.